Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. For the last couple of years, we've been following in the footsteps of Herbert Evans, who wrote this wonderful book, Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, in 1905. But we've almost finished his journey now, so we've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. And today you find Ross Widget and me in the tiny little village of Adelstrup. Adelstrup is no more than three quarters of a mile from Dalesfors, which is where we were last weekend. Now, everywhere you go in this part of the world are beautiful little gems of this kind. They won't welcome you if you're in a big group, so bear that in mind. But if you're on your own and traveling, they are just wonderful to visit. We're gonna show you around this little village, a little bit about the church. I hope you enjoy it. Yes, I remember Adelstrup, the name, because one afternoon of heat, the express train drew up there unwantedly. It was late June. The steam hissed. Someone cleared his throat. No one left and no one came on the bare platform. What I saw was Adelstrup, only the name. And willows, willow herb and grass, and meadow sweet and haycocks dry, no whit less still and lonely fair than the high cloudlets in the sky. And for that minute a blackbird sang close by, and round him, mistier, farther and farther, all the birds of Oxfordshire and Gloucestershire. Edward Thomas captures the peace and tranquillity of Adelstrup so beautifully in one of Britain's favourite poems, written at the beginning of the 20th century. Edelsthorpe, Tattlestrop, Taddlethorpe, Tiddlestrop. Since the days of the Saxons, it has taken a while for the name of the village to settle on Adelstrup. It's never been anything but a small community. At its peak in 1801, when the farms relied on a substantial labour force, it had a population of around 225. Today, we await the results of the census to find out how many people live here now, but it surely won't be that many. Its literary connections don't stop with Thomas. Jane Austen visited here several times to stay in the old rectory hard by the church, where her cousin Thomas Lee lived. He was vicar here for more than 50 years. Jane's mother Cassandra's maiden name was Lee, and the family built the extraordinary Gothic manor house behind the church. The church itself is full of Lee family memorials and hatchments. They record some excellent marriages into great local families, including the Lords of Say and Seal at Broughton Castle, which we visited a couple of years back. These days, the village is home to one of the most sophisticated racing stables in the United Kingdom. Adelstrup Stables combines beautiful and traditional Cotswold life with some of the country's most modern training facilities. When you visit, you'll likely witness the timeless sight of huge, fiery steeds prancing sideways up the road, topped by strong young stable girls whose courage appears boundless. The shops have almost all gone. This peaceful village is served by one post office stroke shop where, if you're lucky, you might be able to buy a cup of tea and a cake in the summer. There are, of course, village events, usually in June, when the gardens of the great houses open and it's possible to get a glimpse of the ancient beauty of these grand estates. If you want to join in, 
you must keep a beady eye on the local calendar. Well, well that was quite something, wasn't it? Uh, it's a wonderful new way we found of filming these uh, little villages. I hope you enjoyed it. I really have fallen for this little village of Adelstrup. It's just beautiful and peaceful and typical Cotswolds. Drop down to the valley floor and you'll find the old railway station buildings long since turned to residential use. Just pass them and you'll come up to the A436. Turn right, cross the bridge over the river and railway, climb the hill for about a quarter of a mile and you'll see a turning left to Oddington. The village of Oddington is certainly a gem on its own but follow the signs for the Church of St. Nicholas for a treat that is truly memorable. Evans, our familiar travel companion, writes of this church. Shortly after leaving Adelstrup Bridge, we may digress half a mile as far as the old church of Oddington. This very interesting church now stands in solitary grandeur hard by a coppice tenanted by rooks and quite deserted by the village which long ago migrated up the hill to a spot nearer the common fields. Here a new church has been built and except for an occasional funeral the silence of the old church is seldom disturbed. We who have purposely left our road to seek it out in its seclusion may be counted among its disturbers. Happier, they who in an April stroll by the evenload through meadow and spinney, bright with marigolds and primroses, burst upon it unexpectedly and stand fettered by the sudden spell. There's nothing to mar the quiet beauty of chancel, nave, aisle and tower, nothing but the cawing of the rooks to break the silence. That aisle once the nave of a small Norman church of the common Cotswold type, received later the tower at its eastern end, and then, in the prosperous times of the early Edwards, the new nave and chancel arose, and ever since it has been but the side aisle of the larger church. What he didn't know, writing as he was in 1905, was that hidden under the whitewash on the north wall of the nave was one of the most complete depictions of the doom of mankind existing in this country today. Painted in 1340, probably whitewashed before it could be destroyed at the beginning of the Reformation, uncovered in 1913 and fully restored in the 1970s, the beauty of this wall painting reduced both Ross and me to speechlessness. I quote from the excellent leaflet in the church. At the top centre of the painting is a figure of Jesus, flanked by apostles and saints, and below this are two angels sounding a trumpet to awaken the dead. The bottom of the image shows the dead rising from their graves to be judged. Some are awaiting admittance to the gates of heaven, while others are being dragged into hell, where the fearsome figure of Satan, surrounded with his imps, awaits them. It is a truly remarkable survivor from medieval times, and is most certainly my gem of the month. The church relies on donations from visitors for its survival, so do visit and remember to leave something in the box. We'll see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can find us on all the other platforms and we'll see you next week. Goodbye.